the next key thing that happens in the sun has to do with some of the physics of what happens to a, to atoms at very high densities. And this is what we can know as electron degeneracy. Your book mentions it on pages 593 to 595, but I don't think it does a very thorough explanation of it. So let me explain how this works. So we have an atom, and the electrons can be in certain energy levels around the atom. You know, this is often symbolized as, as you know, have the nucleus of the atom and then the electron being in various orbits here. You have another atom over here, and the electrons can be in various orbits there. And then you have another atom in here, and the electrons can be in various orbits there. And then we have another atom up here, and the electrons be in various orbits. So all throughout the core of the sun. Now, everything is fine. The way we normally deal with this is you know that electrons can bounce around between the different energy levels. You know, they go to high energy levels, lower energy levels, and so forth. When they go from high levels to low levels, they can give off energy. When they go from low levels to high levels, they can absorb energy. We talked about that when we talked about Chapter 5 and the nature of atoms and light. Okay. But... Every atom is behaving in its own way, and that's perfectly fine, except that when the atoms get really, really close together. Because in subatomic physics, something called quantum physics, we realize that the electrons are not really little particles that are orbiting around. Really, the electron exists in sort of a cloud around here. And so you have these electron clouds, and at some point, the electron clouds can start getting close enough, they can start interacting with each other. And at that point, that's where all the weird stuff happens according to quantum physics. All right, so what happens? In physics, there's something called the Pauli exclusion principle. There are certain kinds of particles that we call fermions. And fermions, when they can never interact with each other in such a way that they have the exact same energy description. Now, the energy description turns out to be something called quantum numbers. So when you describe an electron in an atom, you have certain what we call quantum numbers. So the first quantum number is which energy shell it's in. You know, the n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. The next quantum number is going to be the angular momentum. We call the L number. And the next angular momentum, uh, the next one's the M, which is the projection of the angular momentum. Don't really worry about what that means. And the next one is the S number, which is the spin, which can be only plus one half, minus one half. And so what happens is that no two electrons can be identical, and that limits the properties of your atom. Okay, so what does this do? Okay, well, what happens is, uh, in an ordinary, ga uh, ordinary atoms, you know, this actually turns out to be an uh, explanation of some interesting things. In the uh, hydrogen atom, you only get one, one electron. Okay, uh, now it turns out the electrons can't all be the same, so we add another electron in there for helium, you have two electrons, and so that means one spin up, one is spin down. Now, in order to get another electron, you, you can't, they cannot all be the same quantum number, so you need to change one of the other numbers. You cannot change the angular momentum number because there's not enough energy for more angular momentum, so you have to have more energy. So that gives you another uh, a second energy level. That second energy level, we put an electron in, that's one way. Put another electron in, that can be another way. And now you can put the angular momentum. The angular momentum can be, you know, up, down, or neutral, and that gives you, uh, each one of those can be two electrons uh, because they be, can be spin up or spin down, and so that would give you eight more. And so that would mean you'd be able to, uh, that would give you six more, which means a total of eight, and so uh, um, you, you repeat. 
Okay, and so what happens is you start with one outer electron, two outer electrons, so forth, until you've filled it all up, uh, that, that outer layer. Okay, now the chemistry relates to uh, how many outer electrons are. One outer electron things all act like other one outer electron things. Two outer electron things act like two outer electron things. All but one outer electron thing acts like all but one outer electron thing, and all, all things that have completely full shells are full. Then you got, but to add any more electrons, you need more angular momentum than you have energy for. So you add uh, uh, another energy and you can repeat the process you just did. Okay. Then you add uh, more energy and now you actually have enough energy for even more angular momentum. And so that allows you to put more things in here. And so what happens is that if you were to make a table of elements, it would repeat periodically. Uh, with filling up these electrons. You'd call such a thing maybe a periodic table of the elements. Okay, and it has to do with the Pauli exclusion principle. Now, how does that relate to what we are dealing with now? Well, that means that for a degenerate electron gas, uh, what happens is you've squeezed all these atoms so close together that their electron clouds start to interact. That means they cannot all be the same energy. So the electrons are fermions, they cannot all be the same energy, so that means that, that you have to have more energy to squeeze them together. In fact, what happens is that they can only get so close and then they can't get any closer because the electrons in one atom cannot be the same energy as the electrons in another atom. In order to get closer, you have to have more energy. Okay, so that means that unlike a normal sort of gas that you heat it up and um, it expands, when you heat up this degenerate system, then what happens is it contracts because now the extra energy means they can get closer together. Okay, and then they can start overlapping more because now you have all the, the energy that the electrons aren't all the same energy level anymore. Okay, so this kind of system we call it shrinks and shrinks and shrinks when it reaches the point that the electrons cannot overlap because you don't have enough energy. That's a degenerate electron system. Okay, now if you squeeze it more, then it takes gravitational energy to make it squeeze. So that would actually change it. It doesn't actually get hotter when you squeeze it. Okay, likewise, it just gets smaller. Uh, likewise, when you heat it, instead of expanding, it contracts. It's not acting like the ideal gas that you normally learn about in chemistry. So it doesn't behave the same way. When the core of the sun reaches this degenerate state, it shrinks until it, it reaches that point and it stops shrinking. So the core of the sun at that point will stop shrinking. Now you're still fusing hydrogen into helium in the shell. And that extra helium falls into the core that adds mass. That extra mass means extra gravity. Extra gravity means extra gravitational energy. That allows it to shrink a little bit. Okay, but it's not shrinking because it's cooling off. And at this point, it can't cool off anymore. If it, if it cools off, you don't have energy to keep things that close together, and it would actually expand. We can't expand because of the, the, uh, uh, the pressure pulling everything together. So the generate system is just not normal. Okay, and this is what the core of the sun is going to be once it reaches the red giant stage. It becomes a degenerate electron system. Uh, and the degenerate electron pressure is what stops it from collapsing anymore. The only way to overcome that is to add extra energy. You make it hotter, that allows you to shrink it more, or you add extra mass, the extra gravity means extra gravitational energy, that extra energy allows you to shrink it more. So that's, that's, that's how the core is now going to behave. Nothing at all like what you're familiar with.